this is the face of a man who just talked about capturing, strangling, and murdering over 90 women. That statement should set the tone for the whole video I'm about to show you. As you watch the video, you will realize he never respected his victims and he still doesn't respect his victims even after they are dead. So how can one man get away with so many murders in so many different states within a longer period of time without actually being caught in a time that so many serial killers were being caught was it because he was smart or was it because of society before we get into the what let's talk about the why and how this is Samuel Little It is common for a serial killer to claim that they love their victims. So that begs the question, why would you kill somebody you love? But then you realize these are not people they've loved their whole life. This is a person he just met about 30 minutes ago and he's claiming he loved her. I think it has more to do with lust than love. And also that explains why they usually don't kill their family, like their wives and their children. It's always somebody. They don't know. How many times have you heard a serial killer say that, oh, so I was caught doing this thing and out of nowhere, the cops just let me go. I guess they didn't find anything on me and they just let me go. How many times have you actually heard that? And I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they caught Ted Bundy before, but then they let him go. And I'm pretty sure they caught Jeffrey Dahmer before but they let him go and i might be wrong Yeah, I'm, I'm not here. I, I got his mind off. 
just this nigga trying to wait to say no look. And I got away like that. He said, well, you got to get out of here. Wow. I got in the car and took off. Alabama did the same thing. I had this black chick up in the car. And, um, uh, Thank 
but you know, it was a boy came, she left her son. And she called him over there. And he came over, hey, I had a shook my hand and everything. Yeah. Now, how old was he? He was about 20 or about 19, 20. Okay, black male or? Black male. And where were you at when you met her? It was on the Owens Avenue. Eventually take her her body to. I was I was headed toward California. So as I drove out of Las Vegas, I did I seen a motel and a road leading up to the motel. And I said there's a lot of bushes and brushes us beside the road before you got to that motel. That's where I dropped pulled her body out and rolled it down there. And I heard a secondary road of noise. That meant she was so you basically roll her into a pretty big ditch that's got a bunch of... Well, it wasn't a ditch, it was a slope. Okay. That didn't look like a slope because the vegetation had grown up out of the slope oh. and looked like you know it was... You, you would think that the road would just be flat. But actually, the road was going down a slope like, And that's why she rolled. So this is a slope right off the road. Yeah. Okay. And tell me about how far do you think you were outside of Las Vegas? The road I was on was going towards Searchlight. So whatever the name of that road is, that's the road I was on. And how far outside of Las Vegas do you think you were? Were you in Las Vegas? About, I was still in Las Vegas, yeah. Okay. But I was on Most of these confessions have not been verified. How can one man remember everything that happened from 1970 all the way to 2005 and he if he really killed over 95 people then how can he remember every detail of every person he killed and i'm not saying it's not possible and he didn't kill over 95 people but i'm just saying some of the contents might be made up the fact that he remembers their age their weight one of their boyfriends is you know a little bit skeptical but he's still a really, really bad person. I never cut, stay out, burn, bit. But no, none of that. I got no blood. I don't like blood. The only thing I did was blow was Some live and some did. He made over 95 confessions, but I can only show you four because they seem to have the same theme, which is go to a low income neighborhood go to the bar or a nightclub, find a girl who has no social connections, convince the girl to go with you, and then kill the girl, and then take her to the forest, and then stash the body. Throughout all his confessions, the one theme that seems to pop out every time is that he took them to the forest. But that's nothing to be fascinated about. Let's talk about how Samuel Little got to this point. What made him decide the best thing for him to do was to just go around, you know, killing women. And what did he do? How did he get all this money to go to the places he went to to get these people that he got? Played with you a little bit on the way out there and you killed her in the car. Yes, I was trying for it. You beat it too. <laughs> So who is Samuel Little? Born in Georgia, mom was a prostitute. Being a prostitute, obviously she couldn't take care of Little so she abandoned him. Some even say she gave birth to Samuel Little while she was in jail in Ohio. So Little was taken to his grandmother, his grandmother raised him, he went to school but he wasn't always good at school so he just dropped out. After dropping out of high school, you already know how the story is gonna go. During his teenage years, he started getting arrested for petty petty stuff like fraud, driving under the influence, assault, robbery, and rape. You know, those things that you don't think about doing when you were a teenager. By 1975, he had been arrested over 25 times across 11 states. In total, he served 10 years from various offenses and escaped two murder convictions before he was finally caught in 2014. So how did Samuel Little fund all these activities, illegal activities that he was doing? Well, 
Little said he, he, he used to work as a, you know, cemetery worker. He works in a cemetery, you know, think about it. Cemetery worker, he kills people. And he also used to be an ambulance attendant. I mean, think about it. This man was around people that were either dying or were already dead. I'm not saying that account for everything he did, but this man's life from the beginning to when he actually started killing was in shambles. I mean, he was doomed to start killing. And I know people will say, not nah, everybody who had a troubled childhood went on and become a serial killer. But then I'm not only talking about his childhood. I'm also talking about his teenage years when he started shoplifting, assaulting people. It was doomed for him to start killing. One could also argue that having no male figure in his life and his mom being a prostitute and abandoning him might also have a toll in his life. What if he had all these hatred for his mom that he started taking it on women that has done nothing to him, women that were in the same situation that his mom was in? I am not saying that's an excuse for anything he did, but rather looking at the different perspectives of what could have made this man into what he became.